The plane we're building today is the Curtis JN4, affectionately known of as the Curtis Jenny. They go with Burton, the bullpen, and they're probably going to have the first down with the forward progress. Pratt tried to pull him back. Let's see the spot. Start to his career, that was Dana right there. Pushes it outside, but really Bolton with that punch, he's so strong for a linebacker, he's really helped this team. Bengals, and right there, that's one of them. Back-to-back -back plays, both probably could have been caught. This one just on the out of the city with a sack fumble, an interception. So you have to be smart with the ball. And Mahomes is usually really good at that. You move around and make a play. I'm anxious to see what kind of design they do. Do they get spread out a lot, or do they get tight to the line of scrimmage? So we have one more of the Wyoming history airplanes to build. Um, this is the Curtis JN4, affectionately known of as the Jenny, probably Forrest Gump's favorite airplane. Um, the Jenny was designed in 1915. Uh, it had a V8 engine, produced something like 110 horsepower, and uh, uh, the plane could fly at up to 75 miles per hour. Cruising speed was 60 miles per hour. And it was mainly used during World War I as a training plane. They also used them a little bit for bombing and then they used them to uh, do reconnaissance. But mainly it was a training airplane. Uh, two people could sit in it and two people could fly it. So uh, the, the teaching pilot could be in the back and the learning pilot in the front. He's learning how to fly the airplane. Uh, and if it was having any trouble, the the teacher could just take over. Now, the, they had thousands of these planes made, um, and then there was nothing to do with them after the war. So the U.S. Postal Service bought them, and that's where it figures into uh, Wyoming history. The postal route, the first air route across the country, went across Wyoming, southern Wyoming basically following Interstate 80, where that is. It was actually following the railroad. And if you know that part of the country very well, you know the wind blows very hard. So there were times that this plane would take off and not go anywhere. 60 mile an hour wind is common on Interstate 80. Um, the, the pilots were required to try and fly, but sometimes they didn't, couldn't go anywhere. And other times they did crash. A lot of these airplanes crashed. Uh, we had postal routes being done with airplanes in the east, but this was the first transcontinental postal route. And it was flown by the JN4. There were some of these planes that were made uh, with more modified engines later on uh, that got up to, uh, oh, probably 115 miles an hour um, when they were really trying hard. But by and large, this was a very slow-moving airplane. It was kind of heavy. It could only get up to about 6,500 feet, which is not high enough to get, get across Wyoming, but somehow the pilots managed to do it. And there's actually, in southern Wyoming, there are these big concrete arrows pointing the direction to go between Cheyenne and uh, Salt Lake, or Salt Lake and Cheyenne, and they would be lit up on the ground uh, and the pilots would just look for them at night and try and see where it was lit up. And of course, in a blizzard, they couldn't see anything. It was a very dangerous thing, uh, being a pilot back then, working for, uh, working for uh, the mail service. But uh, anyway, this is it, the JN4. Um, probably the last of our Wyoming historic airplanes. Uh, but uh, anyway, it was a fun build. And um, we're getting close to football season being over with, which means probably won't be building as many things real soon. Anyway, JN4, Curtis Aviation.